as is the case a lot of times when Jesus speaks with the leaders of the Jews, a very small argument that they try to bring turns into something uh, much bigger, much more deep that Jesus wants to go through. Jesus is here asked a question about uh, the apostles washing hands. And obviously Jesus is not against washing hands before you eat, but that's what the question posed to him is, is why are your disciples not going through these uh, rituals of washing hands before they eat? And the reason why Jesus goes so much deeper than that, and he doesn't only talk about that one question, is because he knows that the people asking him have a different agenda, have a different intention for why they're asking him about why the apostles are, are not following the traditions of, of hand washing. When you eat, after you go from the marketplace, the reason why these old Jewish laws were put in place was so that the people can be seen as separate in a way from the rest of the world that does not worship one God. So there are things that obviously we do in our lives, things even that we wear, like for example, when you wear a cross, somebody will know right away, this person is a Christian, this person is a follower of Jesus because no other uh, religion, uh, no other people of uh, other religions wear crosses. So the, God made some laws for the Jewish people so that they can be distinguished from the pagans. So that they cannot be seen as idolaters, as worshipping many gods. What Jesus is talking about here are man-made laws that the Pharisees and scribes, that the Jewish leaders made. So that they can go to an extreme level of following laws that they made because they had different intentions. Their intentions were not to worship one God when it comes to following these laws. Their intentions were to make it seem like they worship one God. That's what Jesus wanted to point out to them in a very real way. That's why Jesus, when he's talking about just something outer, just, just washing hands, just making yourself look clean, that's why he talks about the heart. That's why we know just wearing something or just following rituals doesn't actually make you someone that only worships one God. Doesn't actually make you somebody that's a Christian. But it makes you look like you are. Just like wearing a cross doesn't make you a Christian. Coming into church doesn't necessarily make you a Christian right away. There are certain things that you have to do in order to be a Christian. And that's something that only God will know. These, these men were not talking to a normal human being. They could fool a lot of people. We could fool a lot of people by the actions that we do, by, by the clothes that we wear, by the, by the rosaries that we have in our cars. We could fool a lot of people. These people tried to fool somebody that they thought was a normal human being because they were fooling a lot of people. But they didn't know that this human being that they were talking to was also God himself. And we cannot fool God. That's why Jesus says to them, what comes out of a man is what defiles, is what makes you dirty. Not just what goes in, it's not just about what you eat. It's not just about these outside rituals that you have to follow. It's not just about pleasing other human beings or about making other human beings think that you are some, some sort of way. God wants us to go deeper within ourselves, to search deep within ourselves and to see, am I only clean on the outside or am I clean on the inside? Jesus gives one example of this, about how these men who were the leaders of the Jews, how they ma manipulated God's law for their own benefit. The one example that he gives is about mistreating family. It's about putting your own agenda, about using God's law when it comes to being selfish and to mistreating others. That's why there was a law from God, obviously we know, honor your father and mother. The law of the Pharisees was if you give a donation to God, you don't have to help your family anymore. You're, you're free from that bond. 
Jesus doesn't want us to think only in terms of technicalities when it comes to following law. Your father and your mother are a gift from God. No matter what they've done in your life, no matter what relationship you have with them, God wants you to care for them, no matter how much you give into church. That's why a lot of times, people will use God's law for their own benefit, will use God's law to make themselves look or seem to be something that they're not. That's why Jesus wants us to act in all of our actions, in all of our words, and in all of our thoughts. Jesus wants us to act with His law in mind. Not to make up our own laws just for the sake of making our lives easier. Jesus wants us to be actually clean and not to just look like we are clean. We have choices to make once we know and once we see, once we realize with ourselves how dirty we are when it comes to our sins. When you see a room that's dirty, you have either one of two choices. You can either walk away and leave the room dirty, or you can start to work hard and you, you can clean it. When it's your room, you're going to treat it differently. When it's your body or your soul, which are temples of the Holy Spirit, when we realize that our bodies and souls are dirty through sin, we have two choices there. We can either leave them that way, or we can try to clean them. Jesus talks specifically about the sins of impurity. What does Jesus want us to care about, and what is that going to do to our soul? Jesus wants us to care more about our salvation, more about us going to heaven than about our reputation. More about what God thinks about us than about what other humans think about us. Because when we care more about our reputation than our salvation, we give room for the devil to come into our lives, and to come and to tempt us to fall into sin. And that's why when our bodies are faced with this uncleanness, with this, with this dirtiness, we have two choices we could make. We could either keep them dirty and just keep living the way we are and just trying our best to make ourselves look good in front of others when God knows our hearts, or we can try to clean ourselves. When our families have a problem, not only about sins of impurity, but this uh, specific problem that Jesus mentions about mistreating family members. If there are problems in our families, and there are a lot of problems in the families of our community because, because people choose their own benefit rather than the love of the other person, even though knowing that we're all sinners, we don't realize that. We choose to look at one person's sin and to break the relationship with the other person. Imagine if God did that with us. Imagine if in our, if, if we broke the relationship with God, if we did something bad, and if God treated us like we treat those who hurt us. Imagine. We would go to hell because that's what we deserve because of our sins. But God, out of His mercy, accepts us accepts our true repentance because he knows when we are serious about wanting to go deep within ourselves and to change, to really clean ourselves. If you have problems with sins of impurity, if you have problems with, uh, with relationships of the family, whatever sin it is that you struggle with, come to Christ with it. Come to Christ with it and have him be the one to truly clean your heart. No matter how dirty your heart is, no matter how many sins you've done in your life, Christ is the ultimate source of purity. Christ is the ultimate source of light to, to enlighten the darkness of our minds, to clean the filth of sin in our lives. Christ will make us clean and Christ will make us holy.